Hello, uh, this is Han Fei from the Fellow Open Source Project. Today, I'm going to use this notebook to demonstrate how Fellow Feature Store can simplify and empower your model training and inference. You will, in, at the end of the notebook, you will learn, define shareable features using Fellow API, and create a training dataset while point in time feature drawing with Fellow API, materialize features to online store and then retrieve them with Fellow API. So I will skip the resource provisioning and credential setup today. So make sure you have done that before this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. In this tutorial, um, suppose we have an e-commerce e website and we will want to use Fellow Feature Store to help create a model that predicts users' product rating for our, our products. To make it simple, let's just predict the user's rating for one product for, an, for the e-commerce website. We also have an advanced demo here that predicts ratings for arbitrary product. You can check out there as well. So let's initialize a fellow client first. Fellow client provides all the APIs we need to interact with our fellow feature store. So after initialization, let's look at our data set. We have one observation data set, also known as like label data set, and two raw data set to generate features. The observation data set, set has user ID, product ID, and the event timestamp and the product rating. So we have user profile data set. User profile data set has the user ID, gender, age, gift card, balance, number of credit cards, state, and the tax. It doesn't have timestamp. We also call it static uh, features. So we also have users purchase history data set. This purchase history data set has a timestamp associated with like when the purchase has been made for this user. As you can see, one user may, may have multiple purchase uh, histories. So after some data exploration, we figure out uh, we want to use this uh, raw data set to create, uh, to join that into our observation data set and to generate a feature table and then use that for our model training. So let's see how Feller Feature Store can make this process easier and simpler. So in Feller, Feature Store can be defined by the following characteristics. You need to type the key, identify the subject of the feature, like the user ID, we have one, two, three and a feature name, the unique identifier of the feature, like user age, total spending in 30 days. The feature value, the actual value of that aspect of the, at a particular time, like the feature value of the person's age is 30 at the two, year 2022. You can feel that like this is defined from a feature consumer perspective. A feature consumer is someone like who uses the features. So it only tells us what a feature is like. In later sections, you can see how a feature consumer can access the features in a very simple way. So before that, to define a feature as well as how it can be produced, additionally, we need feature source, what source data this feature is based on, and the transformation, what transformation is used to transform the source data into feature. Transformation can be optional when you just want to take a column out of from the source data. So, Let's start with feature source here. A feature source defines where to find the source data and how to use the source data for the upcoming feature transformation. There are different types of feature source that you can use. So HDFS source is the most commonly used one that can connect you to data lake, Snowflake data tables, and so on. To define HDFS source, we need name of the, so let's look at, just look at the code. To define HDFS source, we need a name of the uh, HDFS source. This is just the name for you, for yourself to recognize it. As long as it's unique, it will be okay. So the second one is the path to the source data. The last one is for pre-processing. So sometimes you want to do some pre-processing before the source data pass into our feature transformation process, you can add it like this. 
So let's go to uh, after we have defined the source, we can define features on top of the source. To do that, we need to specify the key of the feature. We need to uh, let's look at this. We need to def uh, specify the key of the feature and uh, the name of the feature and the type of the feature and also layer transformations. After this is defined, we can just group them together into the feature anchor. Feature anchor. So we call it a feature anchor because it's the group of features that are anchored to the same source. There are other types of features that are computed on top of other features. Uh, we call it the derived features. So using window aggregation features can help us create more powerful features. A window aggregation features compress large amount of information into one single feature value. Using our raw data set as an example, we have a user's purchase history that might be a lot of rows for one user. So we can create a window aggregation feature that represents the last 90 days of average purchase amount. Feller provides a nice API to help us create such window aggregation features. To create such features, we can just uh, use the window aggregation transformations with the following parameters. The aggregation expression um, is the field or column you want to aggregate. It can be a SQL expression. And uh, we, uh, the purchase amount might be string form. So we just do a cast float here to convert that into a numeric so we can aggregate later. Aggregation function is just the function you, you want to use to aggregate. It supports various aggregation function here. Some kind of max mean average and uh, max pooling and so on. So window is the size you want to aggregate. It can be 90 days, 30 days, or even 180 days. After that, you can just build the features together. And uh, the next one is about derived features, section, derived feature. Derived features are the features that are computed from other feather features. They could be computed from anchor features or other derived features. Typical usage includes like a feature cross, like you multiply F1 by F2, or sometimes you want to compute the cosine similarity between two features, you can do that as well. So here it's very similar to other APIs. Uh, you, uh, you provide a key and the feature type and the input features. And then you provide a transform. So after we have defined all the three types of features, and then we can just call build features. Then we can that can be used for our uh, model training pro, uh, step. After we have defined and build the features, we can use them uh, in different places and the use cases. First. Let's check about. Let's take a look at the build a training data set with point in time correct syntax. A training data set usually contains entity IDs, more feature columns, event timestamp column, and the label column. To create a training data set using Fedora, we need to provide a feature drawing settings to specify what features and how these features should be joined to the observation data set. Then Fedora will use point in time correct syntax to join it for you. You don't need to do that manually. If you want to learn more about the point in time correcting syntax, you can click the link up here. So in a, let's look at the code. We can use feature query to specify the features we just defined earlier, right? We just need to call the features names here. So we have like user age, user tax rate, gift card balance, and so on. We don't have to redefine them again. And in the observation settings, we we define the observation features like the path, event timestamp column, and the time format. We support a different time format here. Lastly, you just call get offline features with the above settings. Then we will create a cluster job for you to compute the data for you. The job typically takes like a few minutes. If your data set is larger, it will take longer. We we have uh we have executed this job earlier, so the job is completed successfully. Next, after the job is completed, you can query the data here. So I already query the data here as well. You can see it takes nine nine seconds to complete. So we have user ID, product ID, event timestamp, and all the features here are automatically joined to this data set. 
So after we create a training data set, we can use the training data set to train our models. It is just like, uh, this is just like how you train the regular model here. You have the feature data set and uh, split the training data set and then pick the models and feed them and create and train the model and then use them to predict the predict the test set to see how the result is like. Yeah, we can get see the accuracy is here. In a previous section, we demonstrated how Fellow can compute the feature value to generate the training data set from the feature definition on demand. Now let's talk about how we can use the trained models to for in offline inference or online inference. In both cases, we need two features to be fed into the models. For offline inference, we can compute and get the features on demand like this, or you can store the features to offline database for later offline inference. For online inference, we can use failure to compute and store the features in the online database like Redis, then use it for online inference when a request comes. In this section, we will focus on materialized features to online store. For materialization to offline, uh, offline store, you can check out our user guide here. We can push the computer feature to online store like this. Define a backfill time. If you, you, are, uh, you want all of the data, you can, uh, you can put it as optional for backfill time. Then define a Redis sync, just give it a table name. This will be the Redis table name that we produced. Next, create the materialized settings. The name is just something meaningful that we can, you can recognize in the job. It has to be unique. And the backfill time is just something we defined earlier. And the things we defined and the features, just put the features you want to materialize to online database. And uh, make sure they are using the same ID or same key. Uh, key. If they are using a different key, you need a different uh, table to uh, write to. Lastly, just call fellow client to materialize the uh, features with the settings. Then we will create a cluster job for you to compute the features. It will take like a few minutes. If your job is larger, it will take longer. So we have comp completed this job. So next, we will check out how do we feature, uh, fetch feature values from online store. Once the data is pushed, you can just use the same fellow client to get the features from the online, online Redis store. Here you just provide the uh, Redis table name and then provide the uh, entity ID you want to fetch and then just the feature name, then we will get the feature for you. Similarly, you can do multi-get as well with the table name, but with multiple entity IDs. So lastly, um, we provide a feature registry as well that you can share and discover features more easily for you and your teams and even other teams. So to, to do that, you just need to call fellow client register features, then we will sync the features into the feature registry for later, cons uh, later sharing and uh, discovery. And this is the end of this notebook. So in this notebook, we uh, briefly talk about the fellow APIs and how that we uh, fellow API can simplify the empower your model training process.